my name is Jessica and I am super stoked to be here reading today from Chicago Noir. It's a collection of classic Chicago short stories that Joe Mino put together and it ranges from uh, all different neighborhoods, I believe that's how it's arranged, um, all through time and has a lot of really well-known authors um, as well as some that were at least new to me. <laughs> um, I'm going to read from one of those authors that I hadn't previously read prior to this and that's someone named Frederick Brown. Um, I looked him up. He is apparently a master of the short, short story of like one to three pages, which I thought was interesting. I didn't give a word count, but um, at any rate, uh, this story I really enjoyed reading. It's called I'll Cut Your Throat Again, Kathleen, and it was published in 1948. Just a little bit of background. It is a story about a man who did a attempted murder and uh, suicide, he tried to kill his wife and himself, and botched it and ended up in a sanitarium and he's there. Um, he's also lost all of his memory and the part I'm reading is about the orderly in the sanitarium trying to coach him on his life to help him get out. So it's, a, it's an interesting section. Um, so yes, he's prepping for his interview with the doctors to come up. Red, I asked him, don't you think I'm insane? Of course not, Mr. Marlin. I don't think you ever were. He bogged down on that. I needled him. Maybe it was cruel, but it was crueler to me. I said, you don't think I was ever crazy? You think I was sane when I tried to kill my wife? Well, it was just temporary. You had a breakdown. You'd been working too hard. 20 hours a day, I think. You were near the top with your band. Me, Mr. Marlin, I think you were at the top. You had it on all of them. Only most of the public hadn't found out yet. They would have if... If I hadn't slipped a cog, I said. I thought, what a way to express going crazy, trying to kill your wife, then trying to kill yourself and losing your memory. Red looked at his wristwatch, then pulled a chair up and sat down facing me. He talked fast. We haven't got too long, Mr. Marlin, he said, and I want you to pass those doctors and get out of here. You'll be all right. Once you get out of this joint, your memory will come back a little at a time when you're, right, when you're in the right surroundings. I shrugged. It didn't seem to matter much. I said, okay, brief me. It didn't work last time, but I'll try. You're Johnny Marlin, he said. The Johnny Marlin. You play a mean clarinet, but that's the sideline. You're the best alto sax player in the business, I think. You were fourth in the downbeat pull a, go, pull a year ago, but I interrupted him. You mean I did play clarinet and sax? Not anymore, Red. Can't you get that through your head? I hadn't meant to sound so rough about it, but my voice got out of control. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for letting me be a part of this project, and I hope you have a chance to read more about this and Frederick Brown.